started here with part three uh, with Mitch Moore, and today on our um, third part with the X's Zones, we are joined by both his offense and defensive um, coordinator at Roosevelt. And coach, we're going to start right away with the offensive stuff. So, to a person who's never seen your guys' spread, how would you describe it? Well, I'll, I'll let I'll let kind of Coach Grove talk talk about the offense. Um, you know, when I hired Coach, we we certainly brought the base of this and then uh, as we sat down all off season, we kind of we, we, we did some wrinkles to it as we went to develop into our first season we certainly not knowing a bunch of the player. Um, and as we go on the season two, we'll, we'll even have some more wrinkles knowing more about what we have from a, from a personnel standpoint. But all I could kind of talk about the offense and what he described as that. Uh, you know, I always consider yourself a, a, a spread team, but I think that can change year to year based on what you're really doing and who you're trying to feature in a given year. No, Evan, Coach. Or Evan, uh, I'm going to follow up here too, Brian, quick. Uh, you know, Mitch kind of said you brought this with you when you came to Roosevelt. Where did this kind of – where did you kind of develop this and where did you start to hone this in at? So, you know, as a head coach, you kind of – especially to be a 2A school, you, you really drastically change what you're – type of kids you have in a given year. Um, when I first took the head job, we were coming off a, a runner-up um, and the state title game got beat by Iowa City Regina. And we had a, a all-state fullback. Well, we started running some Fevier and, and that kind of bled into all of a sudden we got into some one-back stuff in the gun. Um, and followed by a couple years later, we had a whole bunch of little quick receivers. And so then all of a sudden we became a, a four-wide receiver, throw it around, run a little bit of inside zone, that kind of stuff. And so Really, um, just studying stuff over the years based on what kids I had in that given year, and, and it just has kind of transformed from there. And, and you get better at certain things and learn what's good for you and what's not. Um, and over the last couple of years, just trying to really play with matching tempos and being able to go fast, but at the same time, somewhat be complex in motion and shift and things like that. I think for me, guys, as, as you talk about. You know, I had I had watched Coach Groper's offense over the years, and certainly we had built a brand, friendship through me coaching Iowa State and him being an Iowa high school coach. And what I was impressed most about his offense and, and the way in which it, it operated is we, it was efficient, it was fast, it, it looked pretty simple. Um, watching it from a from another coach's standpoint, when when you were either scouting his teams or watching his teams play, um, there weren't there weren't very many mistakes by his players, and so. Obviously, I thought it was being taught the right way. So when I was looking at trying to get a guy, um, there were a lot of other things going into the, the, the hiring an offensive coordinator or a guy like Coach Grove just because of what he brought from an offensive standpoint because I think that's, you know, that's, that's a third of the battle. But certainly how his offense operated and how efficient it was and how it ran and how he could talk about it and verbalize it, I think that was what, something that, that really intrigued me about having an offensive coordinator with that, that type of skill set. And Coach Groper, how would you describe yourself as a play caller? You know, from all the different th backgrounds that you've had, all the different influences that you've had, how would you describe yourself as a play caller to somebody who's never watched you call a game? Um, you know, I've been aggressive, uh, definitely in the moment. Um, when you're head guy and you, you get to decide whatever you want to do, we, we would we'd go for a fourth down about all the time, which that, you know, could be good and bad, but um, so I think that that was the standpoint of ultimately from an analytics standpoint, I want four downs to try to be able to get 10 yards, not have three downs to get it. So from that aggression standpoint, that allows you to take some chances on second, not even some third down chances because you, you have a fourth down. Um, I, I want to I be quick with stuff, but also be efficient where it's easy, fast reads for the player that's making the reads, usually the quarterback. Um, so in that standpoint, we want to be able to mix in shots with – fast executing plays. And this is kind of for both of you now, you know, everybody could build the prototypical offensive line. I mean, you know, we always want fast skill players, um, our backs, and we want them to hold on to football. But what do you guys look for in a quarterback? That's always, you know, the great equalizer um, at any level of football. So what did you guys look for? You know, we've had other people on the show that said, well, we just found a best runner on the team and yeah. we just put him at quarterback. Or, you know, hey, we found a kid who was probably – an adequate runner, but he was a very accurate. So we, we built everything around him. How did you guys kind of formulate what you had at Roosevelt when you showed up from the quarterback position? 
Well, well, we're in a pretty unique situation here at Roosevelt, really. I think we had a, we had a quarterback coming in that had played some snaps at the varsity level and turned out to be a, a really good senior quarterback for us, had great poise and, and really developed into a good leader for us. And then we've got a guy who, who we all think is kind of a budding superstar. He could, he could be the next great one at Roosevelt. He was a freshman, and he ended up starting some games at the end of the year. Um, and, and, and we'll certainly develop our, our offense around that guy. But for us, when we're, when we're talking about quarterback play, and right now we're, we're talking about how do we develop a number two and number three, I think that's really important in our offseason scheme. And, and, and right now, as a matter of fact, we're talking about a little bit tonight, but I think some of the, the intangible look for in a quarterback, I think number one's poise um, and, and what kind of leadership skills he's got all year round. I think you can put your best athlete there. You can put your best runner. You can obviously have a guy that can just throw the ball, and I think all those things are great. But at the end of the day, I think – you know, character's got to count for something in that, especially at that position. You, you want a guy that's really poised. You want a guy that, um, whether he makes a great play or makes a bad play, you, he's pretty even keel throughout the game. And, and, and then you want a guy that's a leader and a guy can, they can get on their back and follow. Guys can, guys can follow his lead when he's in the huddle or he's, he's making a call in the game. And so I think, you know, more so than just the best athlete, which, which I think we feel pretty fortunate coming up, we, we've got a guy that's, that's probably both. He's, he's Probably one of the school's best. He is the school's best athlete as a almost as a freshman already, and and he's got great poise and great self awareness. So we, we're pretty fortunate right there at our, at our number one position going forward next year. But um, as every good program knows, you got to develop athletes at every position and, and, and develop some depth. So from that standpoint, this off season, we're really going to dive into figuring out who really is going to be our our for sure number two quarterback and a guy that can compete to to run that first and second team offense when the first guy isn't taking every rep. I think that's so important. Um, you know, going even going back to my Whitewater days, people ask all the time why we were so good. You know, we had number twos that could step in and run plays really efficient in practice. And that makes everything run a lot smoother. And so the backup quarterback this year going into the offseason is a really big, important um, position for us. Like I said, we even talked about tonight. So for me, poise, leadership skills, Certainly, um, you know, he's got to be cerebral and understand the offense, but Coach Grope is, you know, he's a teacher by nature, does such a good job teaching our quarterbacks um, as good as anybody at teaching the quarterback position. I, I don't have any problem that our guys are going to learn how to play it, but I think they need to have those intangibles to be able to lead on Friday nights. And so that's from my standpoint. I'll let Coach Grope kind of um, explore on that a little bit. You know, not a ton to add to that. Um, I think two things. One, you know, when you talk about best athletes, you know, not necessarily your fastest guy, a guy can jump the highest, but, you know, I always feel like you need a kid that's, that's an athlete, well-rounded standpoint, um, because ultimately if you're going to be a shotgun team, ball handling is one of the most underrated skills. Um, and, and if it's a kid that's, that's, you know, only a track fast kid, I think he struggles with that. And the second thing, I think in the state of Iowa, without having much time in the off season to work with quarterbacks, um, you know, only time is really in summer. And they, if they're a baseball kid, you don't have a ton of time there, is they got to really want to be a quarterback. Because if they don't yeah. want to, um, their, their learning progression will really slow down. Um, because they got to they gotta want to learn the, 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 really the intricacies of the offense and, and what the defenses are doing and, and what's the best play and what's the best read. Um, so I think that's a big piece of it also. Quick little situational question here for you, for you both, Coach Groper and Coach Moore. So we're going to imagine that you just scored a, a game-tying touchdown or you're down by one after you just uh, scored a touchdown and you got to go for two points. What's your go-to two-point conversion play? Well, for the head coach, it's real simple. Coach Grove, get your ass ready to go. you got to play. <laughs> uh, no, I uh, – you know, certainly – it's an easy question to, to just answer off a whim, but it, it would be dictated by what we felt they were in their goal line packages we would take a look at that week and what they what they presented for us. You know, um, without giving anything away too specific, I, I would probably tell you that Grope would want to get our, our ball in the hands of our quarterback and, and with some type of RPO and, and, and make sure that we can, we can put, our, put the defense in conflict. But, um, Coach, I don't know, is there a specific play you'd run, would have run last year maybe? In a little different situation? Um, yeah, if I was the Seahawks, you'd hand it to Murdon Lynch and let him score from the <laughs> field. Um, but, no, uh, you know, last year we probably with, with our senior quarterback and what he did best and what um, we had, we'd probably try to run a four-man 
snag concept, get the back against a linebacker where they're having to run out of the box, even though they're thinking run, um, and see if we can get something sort of picked off a little bit and get them on the run and see if you can get the edge. Just to kind of wrap up the offensive portion here, is there anything that you guys are, are currently researching, learning, reading about, um, interested in going forward? And, and if you are, share with our listeners kind of where you look to get outside information for your program. Well, I think, you know, one of the things that's pretty unique about our staff, certainly from a high school standpoint, is we've got a lot of connections with a lot of coaches, um, you know, really all over the country from a high school standpoint and a college standpoint. And so we've met, you know, I've met with every coach individually and we've met offensively and defensively and with the coordinators already a couple times since the season's ended. We're going to have our first full staff meeting here on Super Bowl Sunday. And um, that, that's one of the things we're really going to kind of hammer down exactly where we want to go and study maybe individually, maybe as a group of three, maybe as an offense or defense side of the ball. Um, certainly, I pay a lot of close attention to Iowa State because of my connections there and the guys I know that will give me really good inside information on how and what they're doing. Um, you know, from an offensive standpoint, um, we, we just need to get more efficient. We were, we were really good at the beginning of the season running the ball. We were healthy. We were all hitting on all cylinders. And, and as, we, as we got more tired from the offensive side of the ball, we had some injuries with our running back. You know, we just – we, we got a little bit one-dimensional like any team in America would when you, when you kind of – when you got guys hurt. And so we, we really, I think, number one offensively, just need to find ways to be more efficient and be, and be better at doing what our base stuff is and never making mistakes doing what our base stuff is. You know, but even tonight, again, as, as we're sitting here talking, we're, we're diving into the run game and seeing if we can make any adjustments with, with, within our run game, the way we're running the ball between the tackles. And certainly now we're going to have a guy that – a quarterback that will, will definitely be able to get, that will be able to run the ball. And, and whereas I'd say out of our 10 games last year, I, I'd feel, and Coach Grope would probably be more accurate with this, but at least seven out of the 10 games, we, we were not going to run much with our quarterback other than maybe a play or two to keep the defense honest. But our quarterback will be involved in our, in our offensive scheme in the run game quite a bit this year. So, um, you know, and then I know that Coach has got a really – really good knowledge of the intermediate pass game and, and, and full field pass game. He does a really good job of just studying that and has for years. And um, if you would say what my forte is offensively, you know, being a receiver and being in Wisconsin Whitewater and being the places I were, I'm, I'm more of a quick game guy and just and believe in, in rep in your quick game. So we bring a pretty unique blend of offensive of, of minds together. And so um, I think it'll be, it'll be, we'll, we'll, Continue to evolve our offense as we go through our offseason on just, on just trying to find ways to run our base better, um, but obviously uh, find ways to be more efficient in our run game and, and, and continue to be consistent throughout our, our hopefully 13-game schedule this year. So, Coach, you guys, yeah, that? yeah I, you know, I, I think ultimately, offensively, you're trying to put guys in conflict and, and how do you put different guys in conflict um, in the run game? It sometimes is every everything that's in conflict is always the end guys in the line of scrimmage or the, the those those forced players. How do we get other guys in conflict? Um, and in the pass game, what's what's the breaking point for certain guys? You know, a lot of guys are using their safeties um, in the run game, and, and especially from the four high shell or two high shell or whatever you want to call it. So how do you put those guys in conflict where they aren't able to 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 run to the football as well? And what's their breaking point from a route standpoint? and also just from a standpoint of what they're seeing in front of them. So what different teams are doing against different looks. And, you know, ultimately when we go look at and talk to other teams, you know, I always like to see, you know, what, what do you guys do really well and why do you think it works? Because you know, there's usually a reason. Sometimes it fits to what you're doing, sometimes it doesn't. And if it does, you know, it's just something maybe I can use. If not, then, you know, well, it's, it's a great scheme, but it doesn't fit us necessarily. That's great stuff, guys. Um, we're going to kind of switch gears just a little bit. Uh, we're going to bring on Coach Bagaki. Uh, he was on in, in episode two with us or part two of this little docu series that we have. Um, Coach, defensively, and, and we can go Mitch too and Coach Bagaki both here, but defensively you guys played a very unique style. You were kind of a base 3-4. You know, if you, if you had to stereotype you, you were a base 3-4. Um, but you had a ton of flexibility to be creative, and, and you were. So kind of explain to our listeners what your philosophy was when you started really building your defense. defense. You well, want me to go, you yeah. me to go first, Coach? Or go, you ahead. go ahead, Coach. Well, you know, like a year ago when I first met Coach Moore, I think that's the thing that 
we, you know, we kind of hit it off. I explained the reasons why, you know, when you go to a clinic and you hear someone talk about offense, they always draw up a 4-2 box, you know. <laughs> do. And, and I'm that guy in the, in the crowd going, okay, well, what if you, you know, what if that's an odd front? So, number one, I don't like an odd – I don't like um, just a split backer box. I love a 4-3. I love the apex. But I also don't like even fronts. And I know at the high school level, people struggle with blocking odd fronts. Um, but I also don't want to be locked into a one safety look. So, if you could categorize what we are, we have apex backers. And I love that in a 4-3 scheme. Because, you know, the perimeter people are wondering, do I block a safety? Do I block, block the apex guy? The offensive line who may be running some sort of gap scheme, am I wrapping to the apex guy or do I wrap to the mic? It gets fuzzy. So I really wanted to, you know, I shared my philosophy with Mitch that I really like apex systems. I like odd systems because it's really tough to get to that middle guy. Um, and I don't want to play a one safety look. So we both hit it off and he's like me too my inspiration was primarily with Don Brown at Michigan was doing a lot of the diversity stuff with that player that can kind of go all over the place and you know we don't we don't do anything that anybody else wouldn't love to do I think that our uniqueness is the simplicity in which we get to it within our system you know we're not reinventing the game here it's just that most people would say well we can't do all that and um, I think that what Coach Moore and I have done is come up with a systematic way of being diverse, but yet being simple, if that makes sense. So we can give you a ton of different looks. Um, that's probably how I would sum it up. Maybe Coach Moore could elaborate a little more. Yeah, Coach did a great job. I think initially when we came together um, and looked at what we want to do offensively, we recognized that we're always going to have a, a, a pretty unique – back seven uh, comparative to the rest of the state of Iowa. We feel like we're always going to be, if you take the, the 42 teams in 4A, and I, I would say we would be in the top 5% of speed in the back end of that. And so what can we do to make sure that we got our athletes on the field all the time, but that they're in positions to make plays. They're not just on the field because they're fast and they're in a cover four shell and they're never down in the run game because they're just back and they're, they're a deep cover four or they're, they're playing cover three and they're completely out of the run game because there's just three guys back there that are real fast. So we wanted to, you know, we, we, you say three, four and people can categorize it. I think we almost started talking about it's a, it's a three, 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 you know, where we've got three down linemen, three linebackers, and really three guys that we would deem as our safeties and two full-time corners that aren't doing really any safety work. And so if you look at our defense from that standpoint, that would maybe help break it down a little bit. And coach was right. Um, his philosophy the Don Brown that he studied in Michigan quite a bit had a guy, um, Jabil Peppers, a couple years ago that they moved all around the field, played him at linebacker, played him at safety. Sometimes you'd even see him up on the line as a, as a wide nine and doing some things like that. And so that's where our rider position kind of developed from. I don't think we got as, as, um, as multiple as we'd even like to this year because you're putting something in for the first time, right? Number one, we're learning. Number two, the kids are learning everything. Everything's new for them this first year. So. We were pretty simple with our rider. We had a hell of a player back there who could really run around and hit. Um, and, and we forced him. To, he was a downhill player first. And we'll, we'll continue to play that with our rider, one of our middle safety guy. But, um, again, we, we kept him, I would say, coach, as much as we can, really between the tackles, our rider this year. Yeah. Whereas I think what, what coach is going to do a really good job this year is being even more multiple with that guy and moving him all over the field. doesn't have to limit him to between the tackles. But – I think it took us year one to really get used to where does that guy line up? Where does that rider line up as opposed to a number two if they're in two by two or a three if they're in three by one or they come out and they're, they're in an unbalanced set. And where, where do we get that guy rider? To, where's his initial base alignment? What's he going to do in a game on Friday night? How are we going to get that set and get that on tape? And so we did that now and, and we'll definitely be more multiple as we go into next year with that. And when you look back at your you guys' the season last year, and obviously you're going to add some more things in the coming years here, uh, but last year you were able to hold opposing offenses to 19 points a game, which is phenomenal over a course of a season. So when you look back at the season, what are some of the things you would attribute behind all your success and holding opposing offenses to 19 points a game? Well, when I, when I 
look back at the 2019 season and think about this defense and really the, the 19 points is as remarkable as it was. You take away some of those those last couple games and it was it was below 10 most of the season. And so I think the number one attributed factor, factor to that was our, our team speed defensively and then the way we ran to the football. I mean, we'd come in every Sunday and say, well, we didn't run this, we didn't run this blitz right. Man, we weren't – we didn't run that. We didn't run that very right. We weren't aligned on that. But holy cow, did all 11 guys run to the football. And I don't know if that was a product, a little bit of the way we coach and, and, and our offseason and, and, and the rigor in which we demand things uh, on the defensive and our offensive side of the ball and just the way our guys play, which I'm sure attributed that a little bit. But I think some of that was just the, the, the kids we had last year on defense loved to want to be the guy that made the tackle. And so we'd have 11 guys running the ball. Um, it, it was a unique – group as I had ever had to do all 11 guys the way they did that. So that certainly, I know that's not a schematical answer, but I think that was, again, from a head coaching standpoint, I know these guys can say the same thing, but I'd come in every Sunday and go, our, the, the way our 11 guys ran the football last night was unbelievable. You know, and I'd say that at every Sunday meeting with our kids. And so I think that was probably our, one of our, our contributing factors. Um, and then we had a, we had a defensive line that could that could really cause fits um, to every offensive line, you know, with the exception of maybe one or two this year. Um, if a team was going to drop back and pass, there wasn't a lot of time. We had a DN that was a all-state caliber kid. And then um, if, if we were going to run the ball, we had a couple guys that were stout um, early on in the season when they were healthy that they could stop the run from just a D-line position. And so when you've got a D-line that, that controls some of that, I think that makes your whole defense better, right? I mean, it makes your linebackers be better behind them. We had an elite all-state middle linebacker. He'd be the first guy to tell you that the reason he was making so many tackles and, and, and being such a playmaker is because he had people – he didn't have a lot of guys get to him. And so, um, you know, the way we ran the football and certainly the, the, the speed and, and just attitude in which our D-line played was, was, was really impressive to me. Coach, and I'm sure you can add to that. I, that's, that's exactly what I would say. I mean, we were just we weren't very big. And looking ahead at your next question, that's going to be the answer there. But um, we just weren't very big. We were extremely athletic, very fast up front. Um, we were very, very good, like Coach said. Um, and the kids were also uh, really, really smart because um, you know we tweaked things every week. It seemed like to to find a way to attack what you really, really like to do. And that's a tribute to our, you know, our assistant, our other staff, uh, really being diligent and breaking down film and then the kids adapting to that. But in terms of the kids flying to the football, like coach said, that, that was probably it. I mean, we were good when we weren't perfect <laughs> with, with their speed and athleticism. I think, and Coach, you just kind of alluded to this. One thing when we dove into your guys' defensive stuff, um, you know, the one thing that stuck out was in the in the four losses that you had, which, you know, I'd preface by saying this, were two, uh, the state champion um, and three other playoff teams. I mean, very good football teams. Sure. Uh, you gave up, you know, 200 yards or more rushing each to each one of those losses. In the, other, in the other six or seven wins, you were under 100. You know, it was just a complete double-edged sword there. Is that yeah. something that you have identified this offseason as a focal point, maybe, you know, how to, how to combat that, how to con maybe, maybe a little more consistency on that end? Yeah, I, I think that question, it's kind of a twofold answer here, Coach. And you're exactly right. You know, the, the 200 yard rushing was a glaring standpoint. And we actually identified that about week seven. Like, oh, boy, guys are getting in too tight against us and, and they're bigger than us and they're running the ball right at us. And we've got to find ways to kind of combat that. And we did schematically a little bit. We changed our defense up a little bit. We, we certainly put our linebackers a little closer into the box, and we, and we weren't always necessarily just a, your typical three front. So we did some things when, when teams were getting too tight against us to try to, um, you know, try to combat what they were doing. But you're, you're certainly right. We, that's our big, big thing this offseason is because we identified it not, not after game or week 10. We, we knew it about week seven, and, and, and that's how we – we, we ended up getting beat by Ankeny and um, Centennial. And I guess they ran for some, some yards on us with their quarterback a little bit, and their running back did a little bit, but we probably held him less than most teams. But we got into Southeast Polk and certainly Dallin. They, they got in too tight and ran the ball at us. And um, as Coach said, they're, we're going to identify some of that stuff schematically where we'll do some different things. But um, that, that started about a month ago already, and, and that's, 
that's some ownership within our weight room and in our off-season programs where our, our old linemen and, and D linemen and guys that have to stop the run in the trenches, they've got to take a little ownership and they've got to be really diligent on putting on the right weight. And you, you don't need 300-pound guys. You don't need 280-pound guys to play at the high school level, certainly in Iowa. But you need stout, strong, 260-pound guys that go into the season at 260 pounds and I think most importantly end the season at 260 pounds. Um, and so – I think we, we do a really good job of that. I've got, I've got no question that our strength condition is, is as good as anybody's and what we do and the people that we've got involved in that. But that takes some severe ownership as an individual in our program and not just players of keeping weight on and, and putting weight on right now at the right time. And you can't put 30 pounds on in the month of January, but you've got to put five to seven on. And you've got to put five to seven on in February. And you've got to find ways to do that and sustain that and, and learn to grow into your body. And um, to answer that question, guys, in my opinion, when does that occur most often? Your junior going into your senior year. You know, you're not going to have a lot of freshmen and sophomores be able to do that right away. But those guys at the D line that are juniors going to be seniors that some are, had played significant roles, maybe some not as others, but they want to get themselves on the field, gain weight, show us that you can sustain it, work hard in the weight room, and identify some of those those things in the offseason. I think that that can help sure up the run right there, right? You know, and then um, you know, I know coach will do as good a job as anybody in America is just finding ways for our defense to, 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 to stop the run in some of those critical games and when teams want to line up against us in too tight and, 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 like he said, really take advantage of some of our odd front stuff. Yeah, I mean, I can't really elaborate much on – that's pretty much the same thing. I mean, teams – the good news is this kind of flattering is, you know, three, uh, you know, pretty prolific programs in the state of Iowa – pretty much threw their spread scheme in the trash against us. So, I mean, you know, that's, that's a positive because they knew they had to get double teams and slap double teams on us across the board. And unfortunately, you know, if they're going to go ace and double tight, uh, you know, if th there's really – they're going to double team you, they're going to double team you, and they're going to get a vertical push. It doesn't matter if you're an odd front, even front. It doesn't matter. And so coach is absolutely right. We've got to just get in the weight room. We've got to get bigger. So those teams were able to call our bluffs, um, but that's not going to happen. Hopefully we can just put some size on and take care of that. Now, as we look forward to next year, kind of similar question that we asked offensively, is there anything defensively that you're looking at to help improve your scheme? And if there is something that you're looking at specifically, where can our listeners find some of that themselves? Well, I'll start by just, you know, Certainly, I, I called the, the defense last year, um, you know, and, and didn't do anything alone. I, I had unbelievable help with Coach McGackie, who I named as our defensive coordinator as soon as the season was done. Um, you know, Coach Chad Elbert, um, who had coached at Simpson College and coached at Southwest Minnesota State and Grandview, and has kind of really been all over the college levels and high school levels as well, was really, really helpful and did a great job with our back end. Coach Nordine, our linebackers coach, um, has been at a couple different places and, and brought some unique skill set to the defense it, it brought some things that obviously helped our defense too so one thing I know is that that, that coach McGackie is going to call he'll call every single play this year on defense and so um, you know my challenge to him is when we met is that you, you've got to make it yours it is um, was it mine last year sure you could call it mine I called the play right on, on Friday night I called the play so I had to live and die by the sword and you know certainly we had a lot of good plays and some that I called you'd, you'd want back and, and so um, that's going to happen with no matter who's calling it and so my, my challenge to coach was, hey, this is, this is your defense now, and you've got to make it so you feel comfortable calling on Friday nights. And, and uh, you're going to make great calls. You're going to win us some games, and you're going to make some calls that you wish you, that you didn't make at some point in the season. That's, that's how it goes when you're a coordinator, but you've got to make it yours. And with doing that, you've got to do some things. It might involve changing a little bit of the verbiage, which I know that's a little bit hard year two. But that's okay. Kids adapt so, so quick nowadays it doesn't matter. And, and some of that's going to do some things. With, you're you're going to do some things that – you, you change a little bit of what we do schematically. Maybe it's from a technique standpoint of a corner in, in, in our cover three um, scheme or, or whatever that is, just some things that you feel from a philosophy, philosophy standpoint or fit what you do. And it's ultimately – it's not what he does. It's what we do. But I think you guys understand what I'm saying. When he's calling it and he needs to feel as comfortable as he can calling the plays. And so um, – well, we do such a good job of collaborating. You know, right now we're sitting here on a Saturday night. I've got our offensive coordinator, defense coordinator, head coaches sitting here, and um, our offensive coordinator is asking our defensive coordinator about our offensive run game. And so 
that tells you about our staff right there. We do such a good job of collaborating because we, we all have a, a really good sense that none of us laced up the first football. We all, we all can learn from each other. And so why not cross learn from each other? Have our offensive coach tell our defensive coach some things that gives them fits and vice versa. And so, um, you know, that, that's a little bit is what's going to change and what we're going to study from my standpoint is I, I'm, I'm turning the, the keys of the defense over to coach. And so I want him to make some adjustments to make, his, make, it, make it his for sure. And I, I, he can elaborate a little more on, on what he'll do specifically. I mean, it's a process. Right now we're in a brainstorming mode, if that makes sense. We just have meetings today. Uh, coach Elby, our defense, our secondary coach, you know, we had a three-hour meeting on a Saturday. I mean, so when we talk about who the defensive coordinator is, I'm just the guy that can get his butt chewed. This is our defense. You know, I'm, the, I'm just the guy that gets his butt chewed or gets fired because Coach Elby, you know, spent three hours with me on a Saturday, you know. Uh, who does that? And so, I mean, what we're really – where we're at right now is just kind of packing and unpacking things we didn't like, things we worked so well, you know, like we only finalized two things today, but we spoke about things that are still out there and brainstorm and it was just awesome. I mean, we probably, I, ha I you know, had made plans to come over here and visit with Coach Groper and, and Coach Moore, or I'd probably still be there eating pizza, getting fatter and talking, <laughs> just talking about football. So I really don't know at this point, I know we've got to find out if we're not big enough to stop when people slap double teams on us across the board we've got to find a way to give multiple looks without showing it with a different guy coming in off the sideline can that that's that's probably where we're at right now um and but other than that we're just brainstorming and packing and unpacking things we like and things we don't like 